Hi, this is Miss Manoy. I'm here with another writing contest. I, in particular, really like this one. Um, it is poetry, and I know some people can kind of freak out when they hear about poetry, but um, I think it's something, poetry is something where I feel like we can really get to know one another. And this poem in particular that you're going to be writing is um, something that will reveal different things about ourselves. And maybe even as you write it, you'll find out things about yourself you hadn't really reflected upon. Um, the poem is called um, What My Name Means. And you're going to read the poem and then you are going to, small face here, and then you're going to base uh, you're going to do an illustration and then base a poem of your own on this poem by Jennifer Dennigan. Um, the cover of it, when you start to look at the poem, is going to look like this once I can bring it up. Okay, it's going to have this girl on it, and you'll notice there's like doodles all over the place. That's what the illustration means. So when it says to write a poem and illustrate, don't freak out that you have to be some sort of really technical artist or anything like that. It, it could also mean like doodles. Okay, the first thing is you need to look at the writing prompt. So what do you need to do? That first thing is it says, Write and illustrate your own poem titled What My Name Means using Jennifer Dignan's poem as a novel. So again, the very first thing is you look at that prompt and you figure out what you got to do. So then when I look at the prompt, I break it down and analyze it. I know that write and illustrate stands out. Those are the verbs. So that means I'm going to be writing a poem and I'm going to be drawing some things. And then I'm seeing where it says using Jennifer Dignan's poem as a model. I realize that after reading the poem, I'm going to use the guided writing guide to help me with writing another poem based off of that poem. That kind of sounded crazy. But basically, you're going to be using that as a model to write your own poetry. Now, here's a breakdown of all of that. Let me make my face a little bit smaller. Um, first step, you're going to read and analyze the poem. Um, Analyze means to break down. The poem is about how many different how many different people in her life view her differently. Uh, she has a structure within her, her poetry where she follows, where she says what her name means to different people, and then what her name means to like herself. The name essentially is not like my name, and then like you look up, well, for instance, my name's Hillary, and it means cheerful if I looked it up in like a baby book. It's not that. It means more of when your name is said, what, what do people think about? What is that metaphor of who you are is your name? Your second step is going to be um, to use the poetic structure that the original poet gave and write your own poem. And I've got a graphic organizer that will really help you with that and break down exactly how to do that. Um, here's the guided instruction. I'm going to put a link to this and it's going to be interactive. You don't have to turn this in, but it's a good way to use this as brainstorming and pre-writing for your poem. It's going to go through the different steps to brainstorm, like think of different family members that you have um, and then kind of think about how would they, how do they know you? Are they, do they know you because when they, when they say your name, do they think about the silly girl that laughs at my jokes or do they think about the, the strong boy that helps me on the farm? Uh, you got to think about how other people are thinking of you. Um, then step two is to look back at what you've brainstormed. Each box, highlight or circle the ideas that you like the best because you're going to come up with a whole bunch. That's what brainstorming is. You want to come up with as many as possible and then you want to go through and narrow down the ones that are the very best. Um, then you're going to use her poem as an as a model, uh, you're going to send it. You can either write it on a piece of paper and take a picture of it and send it to me. Um, if you want to do hand drawn things, or if you want to do it on Google Doc and add like doodles and images and stuff on there, that's fine too. Be sure to, you're going to have to give eight different people plus yourself. You're going to follow the same format that the poet did and think about what, what your name means to different people, what you mean to different people. Start with your idea for each of those eight people with blank thinks my name means. So maybe it's my mother thinks my name means, my stepfather thinks my name means. Include the lines, I think there's some stuff they left out like before you tell what your name really means. So you want to make sure that you say that same structure and format. Step three, after you're finished, read it out loud. Read it to somebody else. Have somebody read it to you. That's when you can kind of get an idea of what it sounds like. Does it flow? Does it kind of like remind you of a good song? Is the rhythm pleasing? Um, sometimes a little bit of a change can really make a huge difference, a different type of word that you use. Um, and it needs to answer these in questions such as, 
would someone reading this poem get the idea of who I am? Because ultimately this poem is about who you are, what your name means to different people, what you mean to different people. Would he or she get an idea of what is special about me? If not, think of ways you can make it even more personal so that when people read that poem, they know it's about you. Once your poem is finished, you want to decorate it with doodles, kind of look at the example of the link I'm going to give you to the magazine where the original um, poet and artist illustrated it. Um, you don't have to be some huge, wonderful artist that's winning art awards and all that. It can just be kind of a doodle look to it. Um, here's the criteria for success, which is your rubric. You got to be creative. You got to have strong descriptive language and it needs to be clarity. You've got to follow those guideline formats. Eight people's opinions of who you are, uh, your own opinion. You've got to follow that format that Jennifer Dignan created for us. And it's due by October 15th. Um, right here, of course, is just the thank you page to where I got some of my um, resources. Um, I'm going to play. This is what when you look up the actual story, this is the illustrations that go along with it. Um, you'll read this story. The only way you can get to this is if you have signed up to be part of my writing Google Classroom. Um, and I, I will update the Google Classroom with it. That's what it looks like. There's kind of the illustrations. Um, and I'm going to leave you with a video of the author reading the poem to you to kind of get an idea of uh, what it sounds like being read out loud. So you can listen to this or skip over it, but um, I want to give you a chance to hear the actual author speak. Hi, my name is Jennifer Dignan, and I'm going to read a poem, a poem that I wrote for Scope Magazine called What My Name Means. My sister thinks my name means share of back seats and secrets. My mom thinks my name means needs a lot of rides to gymnastics and loves comic books like me. My dad thinks my name means weirdly obsessed with that band Imagine Dragons and loves corny jokes like me. My cat thinks my name means always good for a snuggle. My best friend thinks my name means tells me the truth no matter what, best giggle in the world. My art teacher thinks my name means gifted. My music teacher thinks my name means definitely tries hard. My neighbor thinks my name means kid who cuts the grass. My dentist thinks my name means kid who needs to floss. I think there's some stuff that they left out like dreams of life in a big city, and lies awake at night sometimes, worrying about the whales, and having doubts about gymnastics, and loves nothing more than to close her eyes and listen to the rain. All right, so that was the author of the poem. And notice, again, that she, I loved how she read it with such great emotion. At the beginning of it, she talks about how other people in her life view her. And then she switches to, at the very end, how there's things about her that some people may not know, things that really make who she is and make her special, um, things maybe she keeps inside and hasn't revealed to anybody. And that's the part where you will come up with some ideas of stuff in your life that other people may not know about you, that they may have left out. You're not just the person who mows the lawn for the neighbor, for instance. All right, it's due by October 15th. I'm super excited to read your poems. Uh, I've got a way to 